Good morning, everyone. It is 4.50 in the morning. I hate everything. We're heading to the Starbucks that's right by our Airbnb. And the donut place. So we're gonna get a lot of donuts and we're gonna get a lot of coffee. Then we're gonna head back to the Hall H line where we left our friends last night. So they've been camping out. It's still dark outside. Do you outside. think Uber drivers are up this early? Yes. There's a rule at Comic-Con where as long as you have the wristband with the letter that corresponds with your group you are allowed to get back in line with them like one person can hold a spot for up to five people so we're good because illy's there this is an ungodly hour no one okay it should be illegal so people to wake up in the morning and still be dark it's not morning if it's still dark outside i feel that on the spiritual i'm just surprised level. you guys can do put together coherent sentences right now. <laughs> Look, I'm a pro. I am fully expecting to sob my eyes out today. Yeah. So I put a lot of tissues in my pocket and you I did. have a pack of tissues in my backpack. And I feel like I'm just so tired that I actually feel awake. Have you ever felt like so tired that you actually feel awake? It's the adrenaline. Spidey's waiting at the donut place and we are heading to Starbucks. Starbucks. It's that way. We do this in teams and yeah. split up because we want to get this done as quickly as possible. And then we want to get there so that we can just sit down and not do anything else. For like the next, what is it? Four five hours? five hours, Four yeah. Five. It's the promised land. Do I see someone? Oh my god, I see people inside. There's see... people, wor there's workers, there's no customers yet. And with that, we headed off to Starbucks to get coffee for the world. We ordered four containers of coffee, dad got four dozen donuts, and then we piled it all into an Uber and headed off to the convention center. The Uber dropped us off right outside the Hall H line, and we were able to carry it through the metal detectors and into the line. Once we had made sure our entire group had coffee and donuts, we started distributing the leftovers to the people who were waiting in line behind us. Many of these people had camped out and slept overnight, so the least we could do was provide coffee for them. I didn't film as we went around and gave coffee and donuts to people, but it was really fun, and I wish we could have kept going. At some point, they condensed the lines into things called shoots. The shoots were a little bit more tightly packed than the tents, and we still had about an hour or so left before they would let us into the convention center. So we played games, lots of Uno, and some other game that Illy taught us to pass the time. <laughs> We were on our second Uno game when something wonderful happened. We were interrupted by none other than Misha Collins himself. Misha, along with some of the other actors, including Osric, Rachel Miner, Elena Huffman, and I think Ruth might have been there as well, were all passing out cookies. The cookies had stickers on them with a link to a website called SPN Family Values. This website provided a place where you could donate or send supplies to the crisis going on at the border right now. I've left a link to the website in the description of this video if you'd like to check it out. It's a really important cause, and if you haven't donated or sent supplies yet, I would highly recommend doing so. Hi, Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Oh, good. Sure. Better well, now. Um, I'm sorry for the long wait. I do have a picture of this picture. Shortly after the cookies were passed out, we were let into Hall H, finally. It was kind of a surreal experience being let in after being outside for so long. When we entered, they handed us each a little Impala that said final season exclusive on it. Then we passed about a dozen San Diego Comic-Con volunteers with lights who helped guide us to the middle aisle. It was really well set up so there wasn't running or screaming or pushing. In fact, if you ran, you probably were going to get kicked out. We made our way up towards the front of the theater and sat in the fourth row. Our seats were pretty great and it was amazing to have such a close look at the final Supernatural Comic Con panel. For the majority of the panel though, I sat on the floor, which my press badge allowed me to do to take pictures and video, which I shared almost immediately on Twitter and on my YouTube channel with y'all. The panel was really emotional. There was crying at several points and they showed some really awesome videos that I wasn't allowed to take video of, but I think they posted both of them on the official Warner Brothers YouTube pages. I was just really grateful grateful that I got to experience at least one Supernatural panel at Comic-Con, since this was my first Comic-Con and their last time there. I don't know why. Uh, but it goes good to feel something. <laughs> Do it again? Okay. Yes! Yes! That would never 
quickly devolved. I'm not going to miss that. <laughs> no. It quickly devolved from an emotional, heartfelt uh, comment on the end of the series to a striptease. You know, 15 years is a, is a lot. Well, we'll say 14 and change. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a long time. Uh, you know, this guy was, was just in his early 20s. I was and just born. You were just born. <laughs> And, uh, and, and we, we hooked it up to Vancouver, thinking that, you know, we'd just put our lives on hold, just press pause for maybe a season, maybe two. We knew we had something good. We might have even gotten something like three seasons out of it. Uh, that's asking too much. And, and that we would then, you know, come back and, and, and press play and life would go on. And it, uh, it, it never got unpaused. And I'm, I'm very thankful that it didn't because uh, it's, uh, it's been quite a ride. And um, it's hard to, to express uh, what we're what we're going to take away from that. But lifelong friends, um, experiences of a lifetime, and uh, I mean, this is sir. It's hard to put it. Thank you all so much. I consider these guys lifelong friends, and you guys lifelong friends. And I know that none of you like me, but. Semantics. What's semantics? But I could never, I could never have dreamed that along with that would come this incredible fandom and this kind of iconic legacy of a show. And uh, it feels like a great honor to have been a part of it. And uh, and I look forward to, you know, writing a new gold card. And you guys are going to be on it for sure. Oh, yeah. thanks. Yeah. This is a really weird sensation. I keep on sort of going and having out-of-body experiences, wondering why there are so many people looking towards all of us on stage and going like, oh wow, like, this is a cool thing. We're not gonna be here next year. <laughs> uh, so I feel like the, the relationships I've, I've been able to build met a couple of my best friends. For me, the legacy is gonna be, um, he and I have, have talked about this, and we actually talked about this for about two or three hours last night, about the show and about how lucky we are, and we still have a job to do. But I, I feel like I'm really lucky because my friendships won't go away, and Sam Winchester, for me, won't go away. He'll be a part of me forever. At the end of the panel, Jared called me up and gave me his name card. I'll tell you more about that experience later in the vlog, but it was a really amazing moment that I will treasure forever. When the Supernatural panel was over, it was time for the Supernatural press room. Again, I'll talk more about this later, but it was an amazing experience. Tired, hungry, and ready to be done, we called an Uber and headed back to our Airbnb. So ended our San Diego Comic-Con adventures for 2019. But I still have some stories to tell y'all. We're back at the Airbnb. I have been posting so much content on Twitter, on YouTube, YouTube, trying to fill y'all in. It's been a really long day. I've been up for a very long time. I'm running on very little sleep, so I'm very tired. So I'm gonna eat dinner, pack, and then head to bed because we have to get up a little bit early tomorrow morning to head to the train. We're taking the train to LA because Samantha lives there and I'm staying with her for a few days. But today was absolutely incredible. I don't really know how to like explain what happened, but I feel like if you follow me on any other social media platform, you probably have already seen this. I was taking some pictures in the front row of Hall H for the Supernatural panel as a press. And I was like immediately in front of Jared, immediately. And I didn't think he was gonna be able to see me because most of the time, especially at Supernatural conventions, they can't see us because the lights on stage are so bright. But at one point he was looking out at the crowd and we made eye contact and he grinned. And so I just like waved at him and he waved back, he blew me a kiss and then he started trying to talk to me in the in the panel. I think he was trying to say happy birthday. Even though my birthday was two months ago because the last time I saw him we had this whole big birthday conversation and I couldn't really understand what he was saying at first so I was like no, no it's okay like you're, you're good. There was this one point where we were both just crying and we made eye contact and we just like shared the crying experience together. It was an amazing panel. It was my first time at comic-con and it was their last time for Supernatural on the Supernatural panel. They gave away an, a replica Impala, like an actual working replica Impala, so that was pretty cool. At the end of the panel, Jared decided to give me his name card. So on the stage, they all have cards with their names on it. They're like printed out, they're really nice. They say 
San Diego Comic Con on them. You know, the panel wrapped, they kind of had their group hug, they were standing up, everyone was clapping, a standing ovation, you know. He points at me and then he does like this and I'm like, I'm looking around, I'm like, me? Like, what is, like, what's, is there someone else behind? Because I know that a lot of their like friends were there, people that worked on the show, cause, so I was like, probably one of them, right? Like, not me. And then, he kind of, he takes the name tag, walks around the table, and I'm kind of like inching up at this point. I'm like, Ellie, is he like, wait, she's like, go, go, go. The area in front of the stage was like flooding with people from like the press, people working for Comic-Con, security, people trying to get photos, videos. It was like crazy. But he like was coming around the stage, he was getting closer, and I was kind of inching closer to him, and he was like, Alana, come here. I'm like, Alana, get over here. And the security guard was like, uh, when I tried to walk over, and he's like, no, she's with me, come here. And so the security guard was like, Okay, let me write past. I go up to Jared and I'm like, hi. He's like, this is for you. I'm sorry. I miss your birthday. Happy belated birthday. And he gives me the sign. And I'm like, Jared, that's so sweet. I was like, thank you so much. And he was like, I love you. You're welcome. And I was like, I love you too. And then I kind of reached out and we held hands for a second. I said, you did a really amazing job on the panel because I could tell he was, you know, trying to keep it together. And he was like, thank you. Thank you. Love you. And then he like blew me kisses and then he walked away and I thought that was gonna be it y'all. I did not think I was going to get into the press room at San Diego Comic-Con but last minute I did. That was an amazing experience. It was a bucket list item for me and this was the last time it was ever going to happen and I didn't think it was going to. I was devastated but I got in. In the press room there are like two sections-ish. There's like a photo line where people are taking pictures. That's it. And then there's video cameras where they do television interviews. And then there are round tables with with press who have smaller cameras or like recording devices or whatever and those are the round tables so there's two different sections i was going to stand in the photography section to take some pictures so i get over there i get all set up i'm like ready they come out so it's jared jensen misha alex and then some of the writers and executive producers and then the showrunner andrew dab they were all there we got to take pictures of all of them and then it was just the cast they were all taking pictures like together jared saw me in the press line he walked over to me and like interrupted the photo session and was like I was trying to tell you in the panel that I was sorry that I forgot your birthday he's like I'm sorry I threw like threw my name card at you I'm like you didn't throw it at me you handed it to me and also it was really nice of you so thank you and I was like go go back to the photo what <laughs> He's just so sweet. So they were taking pictures and then they did individual ones and he got down to like where I was and they kind of had them stopping at three different places. So he wasn't directly in front of me, but I still had a pretty good angle of him. After he was done, he was like, no, I got to pose for Alana. <laughs> He's in front of the camera and he like poses for me. And then Jensen sees him doing it and Jensen recognizes me and he's like, I got to pose for her too. And he does like the blue steel right into the camera. <laughs> So those were really fun pictures. After that, I stood at one of the round tables and filmed for the rest of the time. I didn't ask questions, so I just kind of stood back, watched, filmed. This was my second ever press room. My first press room was just a couple days before and I knew almost everyone in that press room, so I was a little bit more comfortable. This one was a little bit terrifying, but I was grateful to have the experience. Again, sorry to just throw on the inside at you. I was really overwhelmed because I wasn't expecting anything that happened today and I think that when you're not expecting it, it's a little more overwhelming than if you are. That's pretty much all the things that happened after the press room was over. I said goodbye to Jared, chatted with Lynn for a tiny bit. Really, really good day. Surreal. It feels like it didn't happen. Running this YouTube channel for four or five years, posting a video every other day is really hard work especially when you're a full-time college student and it just felt like today all that hard work and all of those hours so stressed out and you know all of the time i put into this it, i felt like it paid off and i had a dream come true today and then i had other things happen that i never could have dreamed would happen so it was just really really lovely thank you jared if you ever watch this for just being so sweet to me you know that i love you but today is something that i'll remember forever thank you all for watching i hope you enjoyed the san diego comic con vlogs i have a lot of exciting stuff in store for you so stay tuned but with that being said i will see you next time with another video bye mm -hmm.